There is a new corporate battle which is playing out. On one side is the top management at Religate, which is running things at the company. And on the opposite side is the single largest shareholder in the company, Religate, which is uh, the Burman family, the Dabur Burman family. There is the open offer, which is up in the air. Uh, and of course, there are allegations which are being traded by both sides. Some, of course, very serious nature. Joining me right now is Mr. Mohit Burman. Uh, who is a uh, member of the Burman family, who is also chairman of Dabur. Mr. Burman, great to have you with us here. Thank you for sitting down with CNBC TV 18. To your mind, sir, as I start, what is the state of play? What is the situation with Religay right now? We are focusing on our open offer. We believe that uh, everything is above board and uh, sooner or later all the regulators will give us the uh, nod to, to proceed and close, mm -hmm. close the acquisition. But do you believe that this is now delayed and it perhaps will continue to get delayed because this is now not just about the open offer but there are other allegations about proprietary etc involved. No, I don't believe so. We are waiting for a CCI approval which we believe will come in a few weeks after mm -hmm. that. Uh, the RBI and RD, IRDA and finally the SEBI mm. uh, with some of these regulators we already work with as uh, I'm, I'm already um, um, in two insurance companies, mm. uh, Aviva and Universal Sompo. So mm. I don't think uh, we should have any problem uh, getting our um, getting our regul getting the regulators. Uh, so first of the block will be CCI. Yes. And they will then the other regulators will uh, come into play. With SEBI, you already filed a draft application. Yes. I mean, in terms of intentions, have you heard back from them? Uh, just routine questions which we are answering on a, on a, on a normal basis, uh, nothing of any concern. Not nothing about these uh, the, the allegations which have been uh, no, no. Just uh, uh, we, it's all in reference with uh, with our with basically with our offer and and the, and the pricing etc. Mm. Do you believe that these um, these allegations and everything else which is happening will impact? approval from the regulators because after all this is a uh, financial services yeah. company. Don't see, I, I, I don't foresee any I don't foresee any problem because we're here, we're doing everything about board. I'm here to I'm here to answer to any regulators. I'm here, you know, to provide them with any information they need. And baseless allegations will continue, mud singing will continue, but we're going ahead and doing our job. Mm. And you filed with the I RBI and IRDA I I as well? Or I'm not sure on the status. My merchant bankers, GM Financial, will be able to answer those questions. Okay. Uh, I got that. Well, let's just rewind the clock a little sure. bit and go to the origins of this entire uh, fight. When do you believe, because you've been long-term shareholders, yes. uh, long-time shareholders of Religare. Yes. The person who's running Religare, uh, Ms. Saluja, she's been at the helm of affairs for a while. Yeah. And things were going well. When did things start going, uh, you know, south in that sense? We've been, we've been shareholders of Relegate before uh, uh, Dr. Saluja. We, we came in uh, um, in both the press in 2018 and 2021. And, and, uh, and um, we, and the last acquisition of the shares was done at, at the, I think June this year. But if you look at our history, we've been associated with the company and helping the company in difficult times. Mm. And now, and now to cast us Persians, they're saying we're not fit and proper. All the time when you when they required money, then we were leading the mm. uh, rounds, mm. the investment rounds. So mm. at that time, they felt we were all right. Mm. But now, after the open offer, which uh, which which they accepted, which they put up a letter at the SEBI saying, uh, sorry, in the stock exchange saying that they welcome us and they will work with us uh, to the betterment of the company, suddenly uh, they've uh, changed their mind. Mm. The board uh, basically, uh, just, to, uh, just to go back, what caused the disruption, the rupture in that sense, in your opinion, as you said, I mean, you've been uh, long time shareholders and they were okay. Yeah. Uh, but something went wrong. So that's well, everything. Uh, I mean, everything was fine until you know the the, the the chairperson needed to be voted back in. So of course, at that time she accepted uh, all the she accepted our offer and and uh, and said that you know she will help us in 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 getting all the permissions as well as uh, helping us uh, mm -hmm. you know navigate uh, getting into the business and un making us understand the business as soon as we as soon as we voted her back in uh, now she's using all that against us mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, but, but to be clear, yeah. you, uh, did you want her to continue or did you want to, when the open offer uh, bit happened, mm. did you uh, want her to continue as uh, the helm of affairs or 
Uh, what was the offer given to her? What was the discussion? No, as far as, far as we are concerned, listen, we don't want to upset uh, the, the management as well as uh, the board. Uh, we, we, uh, we are professional. All our businesses are run professionally. Family members only take seats on the board. And even in this case, all our discussions were centered around the fact that at the most, you know, we may supplement the board with some, uh, some more uh, people, uh, you know, who can add value to the business and as well as provide capital to each of the businesses to take it to the next level. There was no question or about us replacing anyone. Uh, no, but you, you said right now that, uh, you know, when she uh, sort of understood that she perhaps will be voted out. Hmm. And that's when the, uh, that's when, uh, you know, she... Well, you know, I mean, if she, if she assumes that, uh, if she assumed that, um, I don't know why, because as far as we were concerned, we wanted a smooth transition and that's why we voted her back in. Hmm. But what was the offer specifically? That I mean, the executive chairperson uh, position would be held by. No, uh, we the were. There were no. There were no. no there were no negotiations to the. Um, mm. um, to how how the business and what positions anyone would hold after the open office. But roughly, was there an indication because she would have gotten this, uh, gotten an indication from the conversation that you had. So just trying to understand, did you offer her to continue on the board? While yes, absolutely. I mean, there was no. There was no discussion on any replacement. Uh, and as far as we were concerned, you know, we were happy to have her continue on the board. Mm -hmm. Now as a chairperson or as just as a board member was something which wasn't discussed. Mm -hmm. well, do you also believe that uh, uh, sort of asking for two seats on the board, which yeah. is uh, what I believe you did, yes. that also was uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, you know, this, this, this rupture happened? Could be. I mean, we were always uh, uh, doing our association with this company from 2018. We were, uh, we were at many times promised a seat on the board, mm -hmm. but never, it was never, you know, taken to its conclusion. Mm -hmm. We were only, to, you know, asked informally, but never any uh, invitation or anything like that. So, but we didn't even press for it at that time. It's only when we, uh, when we reached 21.5%, we just felt it was uh, the right time to ask for two seats on the board. Mm. Why is that? Because the law allows you to ask for a board seat after 10%. Yeah. Then of course it's up to the board to decide, right? Yeah. Uh, so, no, we just felt that after, the, after reaching 21%, the money that we had put into this business was quite substantial. Mm. And we felt that it was, that was the right time to ask for two, se two seats on the board. Mm. And you're saying that when you asked for two seats on the board, uh, you, uh, it was, it was, uh, she accepted it. Well, she's, I mean, she heard me out and she said she would, uh, she would get back, but... Because you, know, you said that there was, I mean, you were in a way welcomed, the proposal was welcomed, etc. Yeah, initially. Yeah. And so, yeah, and so we were told that, you know, they would, uh, they, uh, she would, they would revert with, uh, with the request. However, you know, there was no, there was no revert on that. So, Mr. Burman, what are you doing now uh, in terms of all these allegations? Mm. Uh, and we're not used to seeing the Burman family yeah. or uh, Dabur as a company, I mean, yeah. sort of involved with uh, all of this. But what are you doing now to defend your interests and your position no. in Relicare? Really no, no, we're continuing with, uh, you know, we're continuing with uh, getting the regulatory approvals. We're continuing on, uh, on meeting the shareholders. We believe all the shareholders, uh, uh, you know, are on, you know, backing us. And we believe we made a fair offer for, for the... Uh, for the open offer mm. and uh, we believe that uh, this will conclude sooner than later. Mm. You've also uh, sort of made serious allegations about in a way insider trading mm. uh, against Mr. Saluja. Uh, would you like to talk about that? No, I mean all I, all, all I can say is that uh, uh, it's not fair, it's not fair for me to judge whether it's insider trading or not. All I all I made everyone um, privy to is that uh, there were the meetings had happened and I had told them that uh, we had told them that the open offer was coming. After that, shares were sold and sold at a price which uh, which they say is is, is too low for uh, or similar to the price that uh, we've offered for the uh, shares. And, and the first accusation was that we are, we, are, we are offering too low, but then you go and sell the share, you go and sell your shares at, at about the same price. How the, then raise the question of my, my offer being too low? Mm. No, but uh, what you're saying is that uh, sh selling shares is fine, yeah. but the point is, and of course what it implies is also fine, but uh, what, what you are saying is that uh, something was done which uh, is wrong in law. I mean, it was uh, done at a time when the window was closed in that sense. Well, again, it's not for me to uh, judge that, but all I can say is that there, there was a meeting and we, they were told that there was an open offer taking place after which shares were sold. Now it's for, it's for, the, it's for SEBI to investigate on whether that's right or wrong. Mr. Barman, another thing uh, which you're saying is that the compensation uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Saluja receives is 
is too high and it is completely out of line with any corporate kind of uh, composition. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, well, again, it's, not, well, it's probably not right for me to say what is high or not high, but if you look at a compensation mm -hmm. for a company that has no operating income, mm -hmm. for a company that has uh, just come out of, uh, um, you know, having its problems, the compensation structure looks a little bit uh, not in, uh, in not in tandem with that sort of company. Mm. I mean, there. I mean, first, not only is the uh, the amount of compensation I feel is very high, but the perks, the stock options that have been taken, the stock options that are taken as a non-executive capacity in care, all this comes to see hundreds of crores. Now it's for the regulators to see if this, uh, if this is a norm, but not for me really to be able to be a judge on whether this is mm. fair or not. But CEO compensation to be fair, I mean, that's, it's debatable, right? right. I mean, there's a fair bit of criticism globally uh, which happens around that. Yeah. Uh, but again, I mean, is this a recent phenomenon? Uh, you know, issuing uh, sort of ESOPs to oneself and is, is the, has the value of compensation ballooned recently and I that's why you're bringing I this up or uh, no, uh, is this I have. I mean, in a, in a short space, I mean, she was brought into this company as an independent director. Within, within a short span of time, it went to a non-executive director, to, a non, to an executive director, to an executive chairperson mm -hmm. and in the last three years, the compensation structure has has ballooned. Not only that, where where there have been stock options granted in in subsidiary companies and have been have been said have been denied by the regulator, it's all been maneuvered so that it doesn't have to go back to the regulator. Mm. Uh, and you raised this before as well, or this is the first time that you're raising this? I mean, over the years. No, or I know this is. This, I mean, this of course, this is the first time. No, internally. I mean, in your yeah. communication as shareholders, yeah. etc. Over the years, have you raised this at all previously? No, this is the first yeah. time that. Yeah. You're raising it in any forum. Yes. In terms of uh, what the other side is that, uh, alleging, we're also kind of uh, raising questions about, uh, you know, whether uh, the 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 double uh, the, uh, the government entity is fit and proper. Yeah. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, I mean, uh, if uh, if after doing business uh, in India for 140 years and being a set of diverse businesses, uh, we haven't met the fit and proper test. I, I don't believe that they have the right or the judge to, uh, to make us fit and proper. We've been running, I mean, if you look at the regulators, you know, we were the first ones to get an insurance license in mm -hmm. 2000. Mm -hmm. We've been running insurance companies for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So obviously we fit and we, we meet the fit and proper test of the IRDA. Mm -hmm. We have NBFCs that meet the fit and proper test of RBI. Mm -hmm. And SEBI itself will in the next few weeks decide on whether we're fit and proper. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also the allegation that in a way you're fronting for the erstwhile promoters, the Singh brothers. And of course there is also the name of a spiritual leader which is thrown in. Uh, I've never met any spiritual leader. They said that uh, the, the money is coming. If you, how can, uh, we've never bought shares. All our investments have been through PREF. Mm. So where is the question of buying shares from anyone? Mm. So I, I totally deny it and I've never met any spiritual leader. Mm. The, the allegation is that the money to do all of this, to do sort of invest in the company came from uh, that source. You know, all our, if you look at the background, all our, all our businesses are, are profit-making businesses which, which, turn, which give out enough uh, uh, dividends mm. and all the investments we've made, even in, in uh, the last acquisition we did ever ready, all comes from our dividend uh, payments. Mm. Uh, are you sort of friends with the Singh brothers? No. Mr. Verma? No. You, uh, okay. I haven't seen them in years. Okay. No, and, and when you, uh, so to the allegation that you're actually fronting for them. Absolutely, that is absolutely rubbish. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of the communication which is coming from Relegair, there is of course a mention of how all the independent directors on the board of Relegair are uh, sort of up in arms and against uh, what, what you're doing. How would you respond uh, to well, that? Well, I'm yet to meet any independent director or hear of any independent director, you know, having an objection. All, all the communications comes from the company saying independent directors, but no independent director has raised any query uh, which has come out in the public. Mm. Have you made an attempt to meet some of these people? What's so the, we, we and if not, why not? Yeah, we haven't made an attempt because all our, because as I said, until two weeks ago, until about a month ago, we were welcome in the company. Mm. It's only in the last few weeks that you know the company has become hostile. Mm. So we haven't made an uh, attempt as 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 of now because we're trying to find a solution on uh, and working on our open offer at the moment. Mm. Do you feel that it was a, a, perhaps a bit of a mistake, an oversight, not to have engaged more closely with the company? Uh, over the years? No, see, we were, we, were, we were engaging closely with the company for the last five years. Mm. I mean, the person who was in charge of the company was meeting us on a regular basis. Mm. They, they never, they never, it was, they never 
she was always assuming charge so there was never a, a way we could actually meet anyone else or any of the other independent directors mm. uh, would you concede that under uh, her leadership over the last couple of years i mean from a state of uh, sort of floundering the company has now actually come up to a more respectable more steady uh, yes. level I mean, of course but it's uh, uh, I, i i believe that the business uh, i wouldn't say the business but the company has come out of its uh, problem of the trouble so certain extent but that that takes that would doesn't only take one person i mean the the full management the management of the subsidiary companies the shareholders who have put in money on a regular basis it's all works in tandem for any any company to come out of uh, its problems but you would agree that under her leadership the business of course right. has and that's the reason why you stuck around as shareholders yeah, I mean, right the, i mean of course the 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 actual b- company to come out of its problems of the aswar promoter uh, problems uh, yeah, it's is commendable mm. and uh, but, but you were only in touch with dr saluja not yes. anyone else uh, in the company i mean but do you think that you should have been maybe sort of you know get to know the directors about well, person yeah. you could have asked for a board board seat insisted on it perhaps much earlier no no in, then then this would have come out much earlier if i had insisted i mean we were offered a board seat all the time but it was never put into motion how is this you how is the, how is a company like this which is 100% there no promoter 100% public not even have one shareholder representative as a director hmm. all the five directors all nominees by the chairperson there's uh, the, so where is the question of uh, of it having good corporate governance hmm. although to be fair there are only i think two institutional investors yeah. and then there is uh, i mean you as a large yeah. investor right yeah. so Uh, so, so no institutional investors. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what the state, what they say. Yeah. Is it whether they've been asked, they've been denied, or whatever? They were well, promised, but never voted yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely uh, similar. You can, but you can. But have you spoken to the other sh- other two? No, no. We believe we, not only the other two. We believe all the shareholders are supporting us. Mm. But have you spoken to the large, the two large no, yes, uh, institutional uh, shareholders? Yeah, regular. There's always a regular dialogue after this entire uh, no, thing. There is a regular dialogue. And what's what? What are they telling no, you? No, we believe that we have their full support. so if this were to go to some sort of a vote at some yeah. point you think that you will come out well, i hope it doesn't go to that uh, uh, to that stage but uh, uh, i believe that even if it does go to that stage then this one uh, let's just talk about that open offer price how significant do you think that is in this entire scheme of things do you think it's gone beyond that it's not about the price anymore i mean if tomorrow you were to raise the price do you think things can be brought back on track No, as I said, I always believe that amicable, so amicable solution can be worked out, and uh, I don't believe it's the price because we are well above the you know SEBI price formula. So I don't think it's worth the price. If if they if there's if they if there's someone else who's willing to give a higher price, then let them also make a you know let them come in the fair. I don't mind. It's not a it's not a it's not a something which we we believe we've offered a, a fair price for the business, and and let the shareholders decide. Are you willing to go up? But at this point of time no i'm not hmm. what would make you i mean no, what? at this point of time no because i believe it's a fair price and i believe when the open offer does happen then we will be successful if this were to stretch on beyond a point and you just said that well you will kind of furnish information and you expect this to be resolved but it is not and it kind of uh, goes on lingers on <clears throat> would you would you uh, would you be willing to get out of the company i mean sell your shares and get out or is that as i said you know as i said if 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 the company uh, says that we are not fit and proper and they find someone else who offers more money yeah maybe why not mm. but okay fair enough what about the care business the care healthcare business which is the uh, which is what most in- investors are excited about we actually seen this debate and reported a story and maybe you can confirm it that uh, the first steps in terms of a point reaching out to merchant bankers asking them to make a pitch etc for the ipo that's that started uh, this is just last week i was surprised uh, but it it uh, what we reported is happening i just wanted your sense it requires uh, it requires shareholder approval okay so i mean i'm not saying that i'm not saying shareholder approval won't, you know may or may not come but it requires it that's all i'm saying mm. okay fair enough mm. uh, but given everything else which is happening you think it's likely that we will see the uh, care ipo sort of coming through the stables really again well i unless unless all this is, unless you open up for first phase and sort it out i doubt it will come mm. you said uh, amicable solution mm. you mentioned the word what what is the shape and uh, form of amicable solution to your mind Oh, I mean, listen. It is when an open offer comes, it's inevitable. The shareholders have to decide. The shareholders themselves will decide on whether 235, uh, my 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 price is a fair price or not. If they if it's if it's a fair price, and they then they shares in, automatically uh, we will reach a level where uh, we will have be in control. Mm. So, 
I mean, so I don't know, though, uh, to be fair, I must say that I spoke to one of the large yeah. shareholders, institutional shareholders. When the price, the open offer price came through, it was 230, uh, mm. the, the price was 235, the price, the uh, current market price was 270. Yeah. Uh, the feedback that I had gotten back then, of course, now the price is much lower, is that uh, they would not have tendered. Okay, that's fine. That was the that's fine. As I said, I mean, as you say, put it to a vote, yeah. and then yeah, I, I, that's fine. As far as I'm concerned, if we, if the uh, if the price is too low and uh, and shareholders don't want to tender at that price, they will not be welcome to. They probably they probably believe that once the Bourbon family takes control, the share price will go much higher. Right. So that you have to the open offer has to succeed for yeah. you to take control. Yeah. That's the point. So that's what I'm saying. But we're already at 22 percent. I don't foresee. I don't foresee uh, once the CCI approval comes in, and you know we we we. we the, we are, we are okay to buy more shares, so I don't, I don't foresee a problem. Where do you want to go up to? I mean, eventually, what, no. you, what did you have in your mind when you kind of? Uh well, listen, we made an open offer for, in form of, you know, for a full 26 more percent. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, the more we get, the better. But you know, I don't, I don't foresee any control issue. Mm. Uh, once again, let me ask you: How long did? I mean, in your, I mean, it's just, it's a new story. I mean, you do not expect this. It's broken over the last one month or so. How long do you think this will, uh, this entire uh, saga will take? And will you, do you foresee you, you're still making many more trips to Mumbai with all the regulators well, here? Well, I'm, I think, I think it'll be sooner than later. I mean, I foresee a few more months, but, um, uh, and I love coming to Bombay, so. We're happy to be back again. <laughs> is there any other way? I mean, I'm sure you've, you've been speaking with your bankers, etc. Is to sort of take this to a sort of some sort of a vote, and uh, have you been discussing options? No, but I, yes, you know, yeah. I mean, that is an option, but it's a, it's a, it's an option we don't want to exercise at this point. But uh, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it is an option. Uh, Mr. Barman, just to press on that point, uh, that option that you are talking about, which is calling for uh, EGM and asking shareholders to vote on whether they like the current management at the top and whether the, you did like a new uh, sort of uh, leader at the top and why is that not, not an active well, sort of a, topic under consideration? That's an option you were talking about. But uh, as far as we were concerned, we are evaluating various options. At this point of time, as I said, we're concentrating on our open offer, we're concentrating on answering all the questions that the different regulators have. Mm -hmm. We believe we've made a fair and uh, you know, above board offer for the company and therefore we will keep on focusing on that. Other options are there but as of, as of now we are not... Uh, I'm just pressing on that option because obviously this has gone beyond just the open offer price with the allegations which have been traded. I mean it's kind of very inconceivable that you will now be willing to work if the open offer goes through and you get to uh, where you want to get to in terms of shareholding, you'll be able to work with the current uh, sort of person at top. And that's the reason why I'm... I mean eventually it will perhaps come down to that. At some point, well, as I said, you know, we have various options, and you know, we are being advised by able uh, the legal team as well as our merchant bankers. And uh, as I said, those we will only look at those options once, uh, you know, these uh, uh, you know, we have a situation where we need to exercise those. So right now, the focus is to get the open offer, absolutely, uh, open offer through. Yes. Uh, just sort of before I wind up, talk to us a little bit about what your plans at Relegate are. What's the vision for Relegate? And yeah. uh, you know, it's an entity yeah. with uh, lending business, it's an insurance exactly. business. And just so historically, we have been in uh, a lot of these uh, uh, financial services businesses. That's why, as I told you earlier, we've met the fit and proper test for all of them. Mm -hmm. we've had, we have two insurance companies. We've had a broking company before, Spirito Santo. We've had a mutual fund company with Fidelity. All different joint ventures with some of the biggest brands in the world. Mm -hmm. We've always got permissions, we've always met the fit and proper test. In this case, Relega has four distinctive businesses. You know, the, of course, the, the flagship is the healthcare business, which is run by, you know, very capable professionals. And, uh, you know, we will, of course, you know, supplement that if they require capital with the other three businesses. Again, you know, we will provide capital, we provide good management, and, you know, more. And, uh, and the management who are there, if, uh, if they're capable, they will continue to run those businesses. And we hope to scale all of them up in due time. And at some point, the care IPO as well. Once the share well, yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Parker. you. Great Thank to you. speak with you. Pleasure. Thank you.